Do you like Harry Potter? Do you love Scotland? Then this is the video for you. I'm in Edinburgh. It's where Harry Potter was invented. From the grass market here, you can see the elephant tea rooms where J.K. Rowling would sit and write. On the other side of the buildings at the back of you is Greyfriars Churchyard where you can visit Tom Riddle's grave. They say the Victoria Street here inspired Diagon Alley. Look up and you can see the original Quidditch Stadium. But it was a visit to the National Museum of Scotland that made me think of a link between the Harry Potter books and our magic kingdom. If you're interested in the people, places and events in Scottish history, then click the subscribe button at the bottom right of the screen and ring the notification bell to be told when I upload new videos. In the meantime, let me tell you a story. In the summer of 2023, I've no idea how long this YouTube thing will last. I was walking along Chamber Street here i just made a video in Edinburgh Castle with my buddy and Edinburgh tour guide, Ross Leslie. I was on my way to see the declaration of our broth on display in the museum here. Now, let me know in the comments section if you know about the declaration of our broth. It's kind of important to the video. About here, I met two guys going in the other direction and they told me that they were from Ayrshire, that they watched the channel and that they enjoyed the videos. Hopefully, they're watching now to see that they helped inspire one. I said that I was on my way to see the declaration, and they told me that they'd just been. They then started talking about how wonderful the experience was and how emotional that they felt. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I get enthused about stuff. But I'm not really one for gushing emotion. You know, like when your wife expects more than a firm handshake on your anniversary. <laughs> Control yourself, Agnes. I hid my scepticism, smiled, nodded, and reminded them that if they lived in Ayrshire, I was doing my live show, Stories of Scotland, in Harbour Arts Centre on the 7th of October. And they could get a ticket by clicking top right. And that there was a link in the description below for information on all my upcoming tour dates and tickets. I think you get the point. Then I waved them a fond farewell. I went into the museum here and I climbed the stairs to see the declaration. Okay, I took the lift. So long as but a hundred of us remain alive, never! Am I climbing those bloody stairs again? The point is that when I looked down at the declaration, something hit me. Here was a 700 year old piece of parchment etched with the ink of holy men, scribes, who'd set down the history of our nation to that time as they told it. How would come to be, why our nation existed, why had the right to exist, and what we would do to ensure its existence in the future. Then, adorned with the seals of men of yore, whose deeds were written in history and legend, it survived the centuries since then. It passed through the hands of Robert the Bruce for me to look on now. I'm not gonna lie, I got quite emotional. Pull yourself together, Bruce. I sat down on one of the benches in the display room and watched as folk filed by to take their turn. Each, in their turn, seemed as transfixed as I was. I tried to rationalise it. When it was written, it was just a letter, a sales pitch. You might even say a propaganda piece. It hadn't taken on the immensity of symbolism that it carries today. People hadn't memorised part of it. It wasn't quoted in t-shirts, it hadn't inspired other documents. All that happened over time. 700 years of life, history and nationhood had changed that piece of parchment into something else. Something more than its physical chemistry. It's almost like over 700 years, 
The people of Scotland had poured the soul of the nation into this object. It's a Horcrux! Yes, 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 I'm finally getting to the Harry Potter bit. I immediately came outside the museum, stood here, and I made an Instagram and Facebook video to ask folk, what would be the seven Horcruxes of Scotland? I think I should explain. Let's go for coffee. <laughs> if you watch the Harry Potter films or read the books, then you'll know about Horcruxes. If not, then a Horcrux is an object that can be used to store part of the soul of a witch or wizard. In Harry Potter books, the Dark Lord Voldemort... <gasps> Don't say Don't his, say his name. name! He who must not be named. He created seven Horcruxes by placing part of his soul in a variety of different objects. It was like an insurance policy against him being killed. Even if one Horcrux was destroyed, he'd still have six left. So at least part of his soul would survive. The Horcruxes, objects that the Dark Lord used to store elements of his soul, were his boyhood diary, his grandfather's ring, Salazar Slytherin's locket, Helga Hufflepuff's cup, Rowena Ravenclaw's diadem, and his snake, Nagini. Now, you might say, hold on, that's only six. But of course, part of his soul was stored in himself. Goes without saying. That makes seven. Actually, he also accidentally made Harry Potter Horcrux when he killed Harry's mum. But that's a detail for, well, for folk who are more interested in Harry Potter than Scottish history. Those folks might also want to dwell on the fact that to make a Horcrux, you have to go through some traumatic event that's enough to rip the soul apart. The bitch, they think it's all over. It is now. The point is that as I sat in the National Museum of Scotland looking at the declaration of our growth, it felt like a horcrux. Like a thing from history that stored part of the very soul of Scotland. And so that got me thinking, what would be the seven horcruxes of the Scottish nation? Now, obviously, like he who must not be named, one of them would be the living, breathing nation itself. So that leaves six. We've got the declaration of our growth, so that means five more. What would they be? A standard carried by a standard bearer in a common writing? The oldest set of bagpipes in Castle Mingus? Lewis Chessmen, relics of St Andrew or St Columba, a Norse helmet of the Geyser Jarl at Up Helia? The coin used when an Aberdonian gave a tip once. A Scottish tenor that was once accepted in an English shop. Obviously the last one's a joke, it has to be something that actually exists. I tell you what has to be a Horcrux. The Stone of Destiny. Now, unless you're a grandmother whose protein deficiency came about because you'd never learned how to suck eggs, there's no need for me to tell you about the Stone of Destiny. But I think that's the point, isn't it? That's what makes it our Horcrux. That when I mention it, everybody in Scotland knows what I'm talking about. Now, I hope that you're thinking about your seven, but I'm pretty sure that these first two have to be in anyone's list. But we need four more. Now, when I made the short video for Facebook and stuff like that, John McIntyre suggested that the seven should be the national anthem, Flower of Scotland, the diversity of our people, the scenery, the diversity of our music, the enterprising nature of our people, engineering inventions and creativity. Now, that's good John, but I'm guessing you're not one of those who's read or watched Harry Potter. These are laudable ideas, but they're not objects. They need to be physical things. In the case of the Dark Lord Snake, it was an actual living, breathing, sentient being. 
So, in at three, it has to be the Loch Ness Monster. Yay! Messi's got to be one of the horcruxes of Scotland, hasn't she? I did think about a unicorn, and you can let me know what you think in the comment section. But I just think that Messi feels much more like a touchstone of Scottish culture, heritage and national imagination than our beast of heraldry does. Who doesn't love Nessie? Three to go. Two of them were suggestions made by contributors that I think are brilliant. And number four, it's that traffic code. The fact that when I say that traffic cone, every Scot knows the traffic cone that I'm talking about tells you it's a horcrux. A modern day, iconic, piss-taking, undaunted, defiant, immovable, anti-establishment, national, soul-containing horcrux. Now, for the benefit of our international viewers, in Royal Exchange Square in Glasgow, there's a statue of the Duke of Wellington on his horse. And at some point in the past, I, I don't know when, some drunk or, I don't know, somebody was on their way home from a pub one night and they, stack, they stuck a traffic cone on top of old welly boot. Now, I don't know if he was drunk driving a cherry picker home from the pub that night or if he was just a really strong juggler doing a homer for a friend. One way or another, the cone reached the head of a life-size statue of a man on a horse, which itself sat atop a plinth the height of a man. Somebody had gone to quite a lot of effort to poke fun at the pomposity of a former Tory Prime Minister. Now, it goes without saying that the council took it down. But before you know it, it was up again. It became a battle of wits with the council taking the cone down every time the drunken juggler put it up there. Over time, it became clear that the determination of irreverent Glaswegians surpassed the ingenuity of Glasgow City Council. And there, the cone permanently remains a horcrux of Scotland. Now, don't get me wrong, it's only that traffic cone. I once saw a traffic cone in the head of the James Braidwood statue in the Royal Mile, and I was furious. There's a man who established the world's first municipal fire service, undoubtedly saved lives and property, and eventually gave his own life fighting a fire. Anyone that puts a traffic cone on a statue like that wants to take a right good look at themselves. But bringing down the authority of a prime minister a peg or two that seems pretty Scottish to me. Number five. Now, number five caused a bit of controversy. You see, my wife and my videographer Matt's wife both came up with the same suggestion. One of the key Horcrux related items in Harry Potter was the Sword of Gryffindor. And they both thought William Wallace's sword. Famously, taken in his capture and held at Dumbarton Castle for centuries before being moved to the Wallace Monument in Bridge of Allen. But the Sword of Gryffindor wasn't a horcrux. It was a magical heirloom, but it was used to destroy three of the horcruxes. Now, don't get me wrong, Wallace's sword is an iconic part of Scottish history and it's entirely suited to being a horcrux. But what really sung to me and made me smile was a suggestion that somebody made on that wee Instagram, Facebook video thing that I put out. Are you ready? A football boot worn by Archie Gemmel when he scored that goal against Holland in 1978. Now, I'm really sorry, I can't remember who sent it in, but yes, 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 brilliant. I'm not going to say any more about this. I'm just going to leave you to enjoy the goal. Gamble. Good play by Gamble. And again. It's 3-1. Now, you might be like my Mrs. Fiona. Agnes was a made-up name. Or Matt's Mrs. Jodie, who think that this is only of interest to folks of a certain age who are homegrown Scots and they have to be interested in football. What? Have you never seen Train Spotting? 
Were you alive in 1978 and didn't see this goal? Even if you've been born since then, you must have seen it. Just in case, I'll show you again. Gamble. Good play by Gamble. And again. Now, that leaves one more Horcrux. But because that previous option might cause a bit of debate, I'm going to leave the last choice up to you. What's your suggestion for the final Horcrux? Maybe you'd have preferred Wallace's sword for the penultimate one. Maybe you've got ideas for seven completely different Horcruxes altogether. Let me know in the comment section below. But remember, it has to be a movable object that chimes with the heart of every Scot and holds just a little bit of the soul of Scotland. Now, this video was inspired by the Declaration of Our Broth, and there's a video with a very interesting way to look at that document coming up on screen. Watch it. Now, the easiest way to support the channel is with a thumbs up, but if you have the means, then please click top right to become a Patreon member or buy me a coffee in the description below. In the meantime, I mean, Doc is going to be a lot of my life. Sherry and Drastic.